Sally Fulth Paladins, and welcome back to another episode of Star of the Command. I'm Ryan Prince Westmont. I am Rear Admiral Tyrak of the battleship HMS Palace, our glorious battleship carrier. And uh, the Klingons are uh, breaking out of the little containment that we've got going. As you can see here, the uh, location to 712 has been busted through. The Klingons have once again maintained a lot of supply, even if they are being squeezed out. And we are currently not in a great position to try and stop that from happening. We are low on supplies, low on fighters, low on everything but also low on prestige, so we can't replace it. So let's get back into things and try and, uh, you know, gain some of that prestige back. We need as much cash as we can get our hands on so that we can, well, basically field our gigantic palace in all of its glory. Hit that red alert, increase that speed. Let's check over at our friends. We are escorted today by HMS Insouciant, which is a little tiny frigate, or freighter, as well as the Skull Crusher. Hmm, yes, good proper orky name. Skull Crusher Break! Sorry. Uh, fighting off against an FDW. Ooh, actually, they, you're you're kind of scary. No, he's not. Okay, so he's just a triple nacelle design. It's just this screen that is scary. And a frigate. Are the frigate an escort type or an F-type? He is an escort 3Y. And there's a third one over here, another heavy cruiser, a D6VR. So I'm guessing that you're the actually most dangerous one, although you may just be a war destroyer in disguise. Hit that overload, start prepping that little wild weasel just in case you never know. Everything could suddenly go to hell in a handbasket and we would need to have all the firepower available. We'll also take this opportunity to increase the power to reinforcements of the shielding. That way we can, uh, you know, actually protect ourselves from the light skirmishing fire without taking it. Uh, trying to meet up over here with the Skull Crusher. He's only got two F-type torpedoes and two D-type torpedoes, so he's actually not the heaviest, most heaviest arm thing we've ever really seen. It looks like this E-3 has deployed fighters, or is that the cruiser? I thought I saw him deploy fighters, and he missed. Ha ha! Your accuracy is nothing. Somebody has just cloaked. I heard that. I heard that. You heard that. We all heard it. We're going to see if we can't work our way around, try and get in on top of uh, this FTW. Avoid hitting this guy. Yeah, he cloaked, so... We don't have to worry about it. Oh, you are, you're you a proper bird of prey, aren't you? He's a proper bird of th prey. The E3Y? Gotta be, because he fired a photon torpedo at me. He's got a cloaking device. Yeah, that's exactly what he is. So we will take this opportunity to switch our shields to double front. Slow down just a little bit. Let him come to us. Put a little bit more power into that forward shield. The wild weasel is ready. So that's another point of power into that forward shield. And let's get ready to tango. Prepare all weapons to fire on my command. He missed? Really? He missed from that range? With both shots. He has deployed his scatter pack. We're going to pop over here. Go set that. All weapons select. And fire! Ooh, wow, that, that worked way better than I expected it to. I was not anticipating just annihilating him in the first run. Um, okay. That works for me. Let's increase our speed, turn off these defensive tractors. We do not need them anymore. We will begin a normal charge system and, well, who's left, actually? You've got... there he is. Barely... oh, so the insouciant was destroyed. Uh, sorry about that. Looks like that E3Y. Yep, as you can see, he is definitely a Klingon bird of prey. He has the two photon torpedoes firing in the forward arc. It's a pretty cool ship. I like it. It's just not particularly effective. So... And we have the point defense systems firing out, trying to lash out at those little, tiny little baby Klingon ships. The K-Swifts. Again, the AI not able to make full use of fighter squadrons. Uh, it just lacks the capability to use all of them. Which is a little bit sad. Oh, if you keep coming in this direction, I'm going to rip you apart. Nope, he's turning away. We'll hit him with a big, massive phaser volley. Took out another one of his shields. Weakened a whole bunch of systems. He's lost his point defense, which is great for our fighters. Well, not our fighters, but the, the Orion's helping us out. Boom. Wow, that is that is way more effective than I thought it would be. Let's come around to port. You're the last one. Aw, oh, too bad. His systems are all damaged. He's not doing so great. I think these fighters might kill him before we manage to get into range to shoot at him. Especially if, uh, yeah, this group of fighters. Think you're done for, son. You may just want to surrender at this point. Now, it has been brought to my attention that I could be doing the piratey thing flying towards my enemies and stealing their supplies. I do remember we did this... I think it was in the Federation campaign where we were stealing supplies off of enemy ships? Or was it the Klingon campaign? It was a while ago. But I had completely forgotten about that tactic, and it would have been an excellent thing to make use of back during the episodes where we were fighting the battleships and we had essentially crippled them. 
Because if we had, well, then we would have been able to uh, basically be restocked on supplies. Let's go over to supplies now that we have uh, managed to build up a little bit and have don't have to repair anything. We have enough spare parts to do stuff, so let's start building dangerous and deadly squadrons. I can build a single squadron of wasps. I don't know what the wasps do. One of them is fusion beams, one of them is uh, hell bores, and I did not take the opportunity to look that up, so I'm not 100% sure which one's which. Let's go out on a surprise first. Hit that red alert. Increase the speed. We are escorted today by X marks the spot. Actually, I, I kind of like that ship. Just from a principled standpoint. Because he's a freighter. He's X marks... So it, it reminds me of the whole privateer aspect. Actually, honestly, what it's reminding me of is Sid Meier's Pirates, which, if you've never played that game, is a fantastic game. I think it's on Steam. If not, it's on good old games. You need to find that game, play that game. It is amazing. Uh, basically, you play as an adventurer during the, uh, the time of pirates in the Caribbean Sea. And you get to capture and steal ships and do trading and do whatever the heck you want. It's an amazing game. And uh, one of my very favorites. So whenever I see pirate ships that have very specific like pirate things like X marks the spot, always reminds me. One of the cool things about Sid Meier's Pirates was it combined an overworld where you could just go after any ship that you wanted. There were multiple factions that you could try and ally with. You could even become like governor of towns if you were in good enough with the factions. There was like a system where you could marry different people in order to get even more power. There was a tactical ground combat game. There was a seafaring uh, broadside ship combat game. Oh, it was so good. Such an amazing game. Needs to get remade. Needs to get played more. It's one of my favorite games ever. I originally played it on the original Xbox. That was the first time I played it. And I just could not put it down. It was so much fun. But enough about uh, games that are not taking place in the 24th or 23rd... 25th? 20... I think 24th century? Quickly, Helm, give me a mission brief. Oh, no, I was expecting to see the, uh, the little log thing that it sometimes gives you and saying, oh, we are tasked with doing this thing. So let's go up. we got to kill HRX-1 the very first. Uh, I'm a little bit gun-shy about deploying my fighters because I was worried about point defense systems. Does anybody have them? No? Doesn't look like it? Okay, fighters. Let's kick you out the back and have you start killing things. Hatak. And... My new expensive ones. Hatak. And you. I'm going to shoot at you with a lot of weaponry. Prepare yourself. Hmm. 70 damage. Not bad. Phasers, you're up next. There we go. Took him out, and we still have the fusion cannons. And we will target you with the fusion cannons. So select hardpoint number three for four full fusion cannons. Get ready for the big nasty business. We're going to have to get the point blank range, otherwise it will do, well, nothing. Stand by... now. Only 37 damage. Wow. That's disappointing. From four fusion cannons at point blank range? I suppose we didn't overload them, which is something we probably should have done. There he is, X marks the spot still. Still zipping around. The Burglar? Okay. I wouldn't have named my ship that, but you do you. Let's come around. Uh, looks like that's also the Burglar, and he will be taken care of. And this is LR-3F. Let's call the fighters home. We don't need them anymore. Return to me. All my vessels. All my friendly, friendly friends. Come around nice and gently. Line up the target. And... Boom. All fighters returned. Mission complete. Excellent work. Should be able to continue our adventures of kicking butt, taking names, and uh, knowing no fear. After all, that's what good paladins do. Another mission without taking damage is important, too, because, well, we need to restock. And we are starting to get some... We're starting to get some purchase on that. So back to the shipyard, or not the shipyard, the supply yard. Fighters... I'm going to prep a squadron of hornets. And another squadron of hornets. Yeah, the hornets are the hellbore ones, because they're the ones we had before. And we will not be able to equip a full squad of... A full squad for squad one of more wasps yet. But we will in the future. But we'll just keep the killer bees for now. 
and we'll hit the map and we'll continue to pound this location because we want this tile. That'll keep the surround going. That'll keep them from being able to move troops back and forth. We're going to avoid a surprise reverse. We just did a surprise reverse and they are not all that hard. So we'd like to prefer to keep the action packed going. More Klingon vessels. Hit that red alert. Today's escort is the carrier USS Kiev. Mission complete. Good job. Apparently the Kiev, they saw it and was like, oh my god, I can't believe it. And they surrendered. No prestige, though, because it was all the Kiev, not us. We were not the ones providing the uh, the sort of terrifying inf visage. It was all the Kiev. Let's get, hit another planet. Scan the objective. Not a huge fan of these. Red alert. We have a Klingon C5 Dreadnought. Dun, dun, dun. True danger and deadliness. Let's slow down to a speed of around here. Hit that overload. We must prepare all weapons for dangerous combat. I want my Hornets flying cap. I can't really tell which one of you are Hornets. I'm going to assume you're Hornets. So... Not yet. Can't launch them. Must remember that we cannot do things out of order. We will prepare a shuttle. Just in case, you never know. A good scatter pack tactic is a good scatter pack tactic. The fact they haven't used it is uh, a little bit odd. So, launch the fighters. And if we go into the fleet screen, we should be able to tell... They are hornets. Yes, this is our hornet cap. So they are armed with miniature hellbore cannons. And I'm going to keep them out as the only ones for now. Actually, I should probably try and get the... Uh, are you the... Yep, you're the killer bees. So we have one squadron of wasps, which I am going to keep inside the hold for now. Because I want to be able to, uh, to deploy them closer to the enemy ship. They're going to go for a nice, big, nasty amount of chunk damage. The killer bees are flying cap escort because they only have phaser threes on board so that's basically the only thing they're good for and the uh the hellbore armed fighters we will set to skirmish mode after a little while although they are very good at skirmishing enemy fighters which is a little funny because um i think i may have talked about this before but the hornet is not exactly the best beyond visual range fighter in the real united states navy it's just not fast enough uh, that is a surprisingly important thing, because the faster you, faster and higher you go, the more energy you give to your missile when you fire it at long range, which is one of the reasons why Tomcats were amazing. Because they could go, you know, Mach 2.5 at super high altitudes and just loft gigantic Phoenix missiles, which were basically 1,000-pound bombs with a rocket on the back of them at enemy targets. But enough about modern-day combat. Let's keep into this sort of modern-day combat, I guess. So the C5 is not a truly dangerous foe, I don't think, anyway. But he is... Ooh, he has no... He's got no point defense system! Alright, I'm deploying you on the attack. You. Harass. 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 He has no point defense systems, we're just gonna bully him. He's launched his missiles. It's not gonna help you, friend. That was... wow! We are incredibly dangerous! <laughs> Good job, everybody! That was impressive. I'm not gonna lie, that was truly impressive. 150 pr Oh, yeah, we were supposed to scan them, weren't we? We did manage to neutralize the tile, so that is good work. And let's see if we can't make things a little bit more difficult for them to meet back up by trying to neutralize this tile. And if we do that, we should be in a decent position to start sieging the planet. I saw something big over here. We are escorted once again by USS Kiev. Welcome back, Kiev. So, 2292, it is the 23rd century. Oh, she's gorgeous, isn't she? Look at her. She's the standard Constitution hull form. But then I think they enlarge something around here for the hangar bays. She's a carrier. She's a CVL or CVS. Yeah, CVS. So she's a strike carrier. And beautiful... Constitutions are a gorgeous design. Anybody who says otherwise has no eye for taste. And let's go red alert. Uh, yep, there it is. The Dreadnought. What kind of Dreadnought are you? Are you especially scary? You are a... Holy crap! You're a B-11. You are like the biggest, nastiest carrier out there. He's a B-11V, which makes him a battleship carrier just like us. Uh, let's kick on that reinforcement on the forward shields if you don't mind. Fighters, it's time to deploy. So, uh, we're going to go defend me. I'm probably going to send all my fighters to intercept his fighters at some point. 
this is truly a terrifying amount of firepower that he can bring to the table. Um, wow. Let's, let's see if two carriers can handle him. Sort of skulking around at low speed. We'll pick up a little bit of, a little bit of speed here. I think around here we should be able to maintain full power. Our full and complete cap, except for this guy and this guy who took some damage. And the last mission, we're going to have to replace three fighters. Which, uh, there's, there's been worse times when we've had to replace things. All our heavy weapons are fully charged on an overload blast, ready to absolutely annihilate the enemy. He's doing a speed of 20. He's feeling very confident, very cocky, I'm sure. And, uh, come on, Kiev. Pull in a little bit tighter to us. It'll, it'll be more useful that way. But he will not. He's going to maintain his distance. Going to maintain good distance so that he doesn't get annihilated when we engage. Propel hub oars. And it's time to, uh... Oh! Long range fire! He's nicked the frontal shield. Done a little bit of light damage here. And we're going to slow down the speed of time so that we can get a good hard look at this massive fighter compliment. Oh boy. Harass. And you can... Harass. Ooh. There's... And you can harass and... Come on, select the... It's not quite selecting the box I wanted to. You will harass. Ooh, nice shot. So back to us and back to a realistic version of time. Target the B11V. He's going to have a lot of point defense, isn't he? Um, actually, no, not as such. He's got two. That's not so bad, actually. I'm surprised. Like, really surprised. He is going to intercept these guys, though. And that is going to suck to be them. Our fighters are starting to engage. And now! See if we can't nick up some systems. And spread out the fire. Oh, we lost our forward port shield. All other shields are holding. I think enough of his systems went down that he wasn't able to get a good, good blast going on. We're going to pull out to starboard. And let's kick the shield to reinforce 360 degrees. We did more damage to him than he did to us. That is for sure. The Kiev's in a good position to uh, take advantage of the enemy. And we're coming around for another good phaser pass. He still has his missiles on board. I'm a little concerned about that. We did lose one of our phaser gatlings. Uh, no power off the main system, but... Eh. Crap. Fire all phasers. And these are our fighters. Excellent. All systems. Fire everything else. We have managed to take out all of his fighters. So it's just the big ships less left and our fighters as well. I'm going to see if I can't... Ooh, we're down to just two squadrons. Let's return them home. It's going to be expensive to replace. And I'm going to need a high energy turn if I really want to make use of my heavy weapons, which are about to come online. And being in front of him is not a place that I really like being. So we'll continue to fire our stern phasers. We got one squadron back. And we need to get this squadron back. Come on, get on board, guys. We, we desperately need you home. More phaser fire. Light fire. Should be coming up on... Oh, we don't want to fire the fusion beams. Focus only on phasers. That way we can keep the fusion beams on board until we get nice and close, and then we can unleash them. Is that... Does he have a... Yeah, he's got... He doesn't have the traditional forward end of a, a constitution. He's got another hangar bay. It's in a total through deck through that secondary hull. That is very cool. Hellbores, away! Excellent work. All remaining weaponry. Shattered. Whew! A B-11V. That is their battleship carrier. That is the biggest, nastiest thing in the Klingon Empire, I do believe. There may be something bigger. Is there a B-12? If there is, it's scary. Two tiles currently neutralized. Uh, let's pop back here. Let's pop back here very temporarily and go to uh, supply. Patch the 15 damage and the other 15 damage and the other 5 damage that, you know, came out of somewhere. And we will... You know what? I'm just... I'm much more of a fan of all Hornets. Hornets are so nice because they can fire at medium range and be very effective at doing things. So we have a full fighter complement on board. Oh, that's, and it's it's a full modern complement as well. We are almost at a point where we are fully operational, fully ready to fight. 
And it looks like we must go on a diplomatic delivery. Hmm. Ambush the enemy is the inverse of a diplomatic delivery, and it is very difficult to do because they just run for the planet. Hit that red alert to increase that speed. It looks like we're squaring off against another dreadnought. Any other targets? No, not according to that screen. 2293.0? We carry one of the Klingon treasures, a diplomat to a conference. What? One of the kingdom's treasures. Oh, I, I misread that. This is a C9X. Ooh, we've, we've made it into the X era. I suppose 2293, we've hit 2290, didn't we? So all vessels must now be aware of the presence of the devastatingly dangerous X-type vessels. They should start appearing any day now. Hit that overload. All weapons will continue to skulk along. I see no other vessels at long-range sensors. So let's also go shield forward, reinforce... Just the forward one, please. As long as we're only fighting one guy. And he will have some fighters to deal with, but not a huge number. We'll also take this opportunity to go launch our fighter squadrons. There we go. So five, or four full squadrons, with five fighters in each of them. Unfortunately, we don't have as much control over them as would be really cool. But we take what we can get. I'm assuming you're going to have fighters of some kind. You are a fairly large dreadnought. The larger dreadnoughts seem to much more likely have fighters on board than the smaller ones. Obviously, it's a size issue. The smaller ones just can't fit that many. I'm anticipating that he will have some kind of excellent point defense system. He is an X-series. So, being an X-series vessel, he's especially dangerous. He's only a refit. But uh, he's dangerous enough. Yep, he's got three of these uh, point defense systems on board. We're already starting to fire away. Oh, look at all that. That is why Hornets are good. He lowered his frontal shield to beam out of mine. Look at all that damage we've done to him. All fighters return. That was a beautiful sortie. He's lost one of his point defense systems. We're going to pull out in this direction. He can't catch us. Uh, let's set all systems to normal charge rates. That way we're not wasting. Oh, try not to pass through the middle of him. Gosh darn it. So I want to open fire with all of my weapons. Unfortunately, we did lose a squadron. Phasers will be coming up. Being able to hit him now. Okay, we've got... Most of our squadron on the board, and there he goes. He just couldn't handle the phaser gatlings. That's what does him in. So, target the conference planet. And quick sensor sweep tells me there's nothing else. So we'll go back down to green alert. And increase to full speed. Can we actually make thir our full speed of 31? Uh, yes. Looks like it, actually. We will be able to maintain it. So, minimal damage to the vessel. I don't think he actually managed to get through our shields. He did destroy one fighter squadron. So that'll be 140, I want to say? 144? They're 28 apiece, so... And there's five of them in the squadron. So you do your own math. But we will come up on this planet, hopefully not, not try not to crash into it. Crashing into it would be bad. We actually cannot make maximum speed. We are, we are limited to 30.5. Wait, are we? Or No, no, it's just the acceleration debuff. After a while, it starts saying that uh, you can no longer accelerate at full speed. Let's start slowing down. And at about 7, we're going to hit the crash stop. Now. Whew. It's always creepy to fly right at these things. Because we've seen exactly what happens when we uh, when we don't pay enough attention to that sort of thing. Just real quick. If you don't mind, I could use some supplies. Just, just for the heck of it. Just a little bit. So, successfully delivered conference. 280 prestige. That'll keep us going for a little while longer. We are starting to finally claw our way out of the hole, hole which means we get to start going back on the offensive, and I'm definitely looking forward to it. Anyway, I've been T-Rex. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to receive a notification every time I release one of these videos, press that little bell icon, leave a comment, and I will see you all in the next episode.